Hi, and welcome to the NTP Software VFM demonstration. This will be a demonstration of NTP Software's VFM product. VFM is a product that will tier file data from primary tier storage out to cheaper secondary tier storage or even the cloud base upon policies set forth in the product itself. Now, these policies can be based on the age, size, location, or even the extensions of files. Before we get to that, we should talk a little bit about architecture. Now, the way VFM is architected is that there are three main pieces to the product. One is task service, and that task service is responsible for all rehydration of data back to the primary tier, as well as all tiering of information off to a secondary tier. And it has the responsibility of crawling the primary tier to find files that meet the policies that are set forth inside the policy engine itself. The second architectural piece is that policy engine, which is a website that gives you the ability to configure policies, and it's an easy one-stop place to manage all of your task services and set forth policies for tiering data off the primary tier. The third and final architectural piece to NTP software VFM is a back-end catalog, which is an open Microsoft SQL server database. All of the information about tiering as well as rehydrating data is kept inside of this catalog for data mining and reporting later on. Now, taking a look at the product, we won't go through all of the different nitty-gritty details. There are many things that you can do with this, but you do have the ability to see in a status as to what's happening and what tiering is going on, as well as what rehydration is going on. You'll notice that we have two different status queues. We have an on-demand queue. This on-demand queue will tell us all of the times that we've actually manually requested a tier or requested to rehydrate data. This can be done with the NTP software right-click archiving tool, which I'll show you in a demonstration in just a couple of seconds. This is where an end user quite literally could right-click on any directory or any share and tier that information. Now, we usually see this used by project managers or department leads where they want to tier this information and they want to tier a particular directory or project share out to a secondary tier so that they can do that manually by right-clicking and tiering that data. We also do have the scheduled status queue. What the scheduled status queue gives us is the ability to monitor all of the times that the core tiering engine tiers data out of the secondary tier. The core tiering engine is an automated process that tells the task service to go scan the primary tier and find all files that meet certain metrics that are set forth in the policy, whether that is age of files last modified, last access created date, extension of files, or location of files. If a file meets those metrics that are set forth, then the core tiering engine will queue that into this scheduled status queue to be tiered out to a secondary tier. Now what we have is the ability to control backing up the database itself, the secondary tier, through here. With tiering configuration, what generally people ask us is around what types of stubs are we going to leave on primary tier, and that's designated by this policy setting here. And I can have a different setting per share if I want it. So here you'll see what I've highlighted is different SIFs, tiering options, or windows, share tiering options, as well as NFS tiering options. Now, the SIFS tiering options, you'll notice, the ones I've highlighted right now, is what we call an active stub. So the file looks like a file, feels like a file. Double-click on it and it opens up just like a normal file. So this is seamless interaction with tier data for your end users. There's nothing special for them to do or for an application to do to access the data. The next two stub types, the HTML and URL stub types, are both used to inject a little bit of workflow into the process, where users double-click on the file, and instead of the file just opening up, it will actually bring them to a web portal, where they can then request that file back. The next two stub types aren't really stub types at all. This one is for copying data from primary to secondary, but leaving the data on primary. This is generally used if you have a high value area on the primary tier, or if you want to leverage the product in a backup capacity. I may copy the information off the primary tier, but not necessarily stub it. The last and final stub option here is the ability for us to stub off the primary tier and pull information off the primary tier and leave no stub whatsoever. 
and this is generally used for really dark data. So you may want to, for example, do what we have customers doing, and that is waterfall tiering. Waterfall tiering is where you might keep any data from zero to six months on the primary tier. And data that is six months to two years old from last access date Let's say we'll keep on the secondary tier, and maybe the data that's older than two years or five years or ten years, maybe we'll push out to the cloud and we'll encrypt that data so you have the ability to leave no stubs. And then end users or administrators can come to an access portal and search for the data that they want to recover. So from this access portal, either end users or administrators can come through and select either the storage device, that data that was tiered off, or what shares the data was tiered off of. So if I was an end user and I was concerned about a particular share, I could go in and select a storage device if I wanted to. I would also have the ability to select the shares that we tier information from. And then I could search for data through here. So this interface gives not only administrators, but also end users the abilities to search for their own data and recover it without having to make a request to the help desk. Now, coming back to the NTP software VFM interface, we do have the ability to schedule when we want scanning information of the primary tier, as well as have the ability to schedule where hours of operation are for tiering information off the primary tier. So what this will give us is the ability to restrict certain hours. For example, I may want to say that during the middle of the day, we're not going to be tiering information off primary tier, but it's okay to still rehydrate data users or applications to access it. So this would give you the ability to configure those blackout windows if you wanted to. Now the core tiering engine has different scan policies. These are the policies as to what the core tiering engine is looking for. When we crawl the primary tier to look for file data, as to subject those files to be tiered in here, we'll see if I go to the new core tiering engine policy, you'll see the different settings. I can give this policy a name if I want to. I can say that I'm only going to tier based on the size of the file, or I have the ability to even add metrics in, like if a file hasn't been modified in two years, or hasn't been accessed in two years, or is of a particular type. Once I create this policy, what I'll do is then associate that policy with the primary tier server that I want to follow this policy. So that may be a particular server. This is a Windows server that we want to support. We do support NetApp filers when it's in 7 mode or C mode. We do support VNX as well. We also have the ability to support generically anything that is SIFS or NFS accessible. Now, if I were to edit this server's shares here, you would notice a very quick way for me to go through and determine which shares are here and then specify which policy I would like a particular share to follow when the core tiering engine scans it to find information. Now, I also have a more detailed way of doing this by going back into the server and editing the server itself. And from here, I can set very granular details as to where I would like this data to go. So what is the secondary tier, for example, for this primary tier server? I also have the ability to specify whether I'd like the core tiering engine to run, whether I'd like to do simulated tier. And this is always a good idea when your first tiering policy is set up to generally run. It is a simulated tier, and what will happen is you'll get a report at the end that will tell you exactly how many files met the metrics that were set forth in the policies and how much data we would have tiered off to the second tier of storage. Now, I also have the ability down here in a very granular way to say which directories or shares follow which policies. So I could add as many directories or shares as I wanted here, and I can even have different policy for subdirectories in a share. So if I wanted to, say, have a particular directory that is 10 directories deep on a particular share, follow a unique policy, I could do that as well. Now, to run this core tiering engine, I could run it manually or I could schedule this to run. You'll notice right now I've not scheduled this to run. What I will do is show you manually how this process would work, first by using our right-click tiering, and then we can come in and we can run the core tiering engine and see what that does. So switching over to an end user's view of the storage system here, this is an end user logged into their workstation viewing a particular share. So this is my home drive. This William Boyd user is logged in too, and you'll see here I have a bunch of data on a bunch of different files on my home drive. Maybe this Word document here isn't something I need anymore, and what I'd like to do is tier this information out to a secondary tier of storage. 
I can do that quite easily by right-clicking on this file, and you'll notice we have these options here. This is where I can tear this file and I can click Yes. I would like to tear this information off to secondary tier storage. When I click OK on this, what you'll notice is this file will now be processed in a queue, so NTP Software VFM now has picked up the fact that this file should be tiered, and I could do this per directory if I wanted to. I could say I wanted to tier the entire folder or recall an entire folder, and this is really good if we're doing project-based work. We see this generally used by oil and gas industry digital forensics, where they may have a large amount of information that they want to push out to potentially pull that information back and process it, and then push it back off to a secondary tier storage. So, as we'll notice, this file now has a gray X in the lower left-hand corner. What this means is that the file now exists on the secondary tier, so it's not on this primary tier anymore and has been pushed out, whether that's just another location on the same network, whether it's cheaper storage, or whether it's just in the cloud. But to the user, this file can be used exactly the same way as it normally would have been used before it was tiered. Here, for example, the user may just double-click on this file and use this file if they wish. We'll notice this takes a second, and what we're doing now is rehydrating that information back to primary tier. You'll notice that the file is still usable just as it was before. Now, if I were to close Word here, what we would also notice is that the gray X is gone in the lower left-hand corner. That's because we've rehydrated the data back to primary tier when the user double-clicked on it so that when a user or application goes to access this file, we will rehydrate it and then give them the ability to then use this data. Once this file now meets the metrics to be tiered again, it will be re-tiered back out to a secondary tier storage. Now, as I said, we also have the ability to run a policy through the core tiering engine to back up or to archive data out of this share. If I go here, back to my primary server, we can look and click Edit Server and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll notice that the same share I've created a policy called BC Tiering Test. Now, if we take a look at the BC Tiering Test policy, we'll notice that in our core tiering engine's scan policies, we should see that right here. Now, if we click on BC Tiering Test and we scroll down, what we'll notice is this policy is following the tiering only by size. So, this should pick up all of the files that are located in that share and will tier them off. It will tier them based on the stub settings that are set forth inside the default for active stubs. Now I have the ability to leverage backup stubs. If you want to backup stubs, it would give us the ability to just copy the data to secondary tier, but not necessarily leaving the file full flavor on the primary tier. Now, in case we were going to run this, we're going to stub all of the data out just to show how that core tiering engine might work. And we're at the bottom here. We can click Run Now, and this will run this policy. Now, we'll notice over time what will happen is all of the data that is in the share will then get tiered out. But while we're waiting for that policy to run, let me show you those status queues. So as I come back over to the on-demand status queue, remember this is a queue that is used when you right-click and manually try and tier data. We'll notice there's nothing in the queue there, and that's because the only thing we've manually tiered has already been processed, so that would be in the completed request section. When I go into completed request, we will see tier number 16 here has been completed. And if I were to click on that, I would also be able to scroll down and see what directory in which users have been processed. And I could click on my batch ID here, and I would actually see the file that was tiered, in this case, the hacker's manifesto, and I can see who the user was who did that, and I can see we've left an active stub for this file. So you do have a full ability to report on whether there are any issues with tiering or rehydration. And the scheduled settings here, the scheduled queue is for the core tiering engine. So the core tiering engine you'll see here has actually already queued up some of the files that need to be tiered. We can see that this is executing right now. And if I wanted to, I could actually go through the active queue and see all of the files that are getting tiered by finding the batch and seeing a list of all the files that are inside of this batch and maybe tiered. So, for example, out of this particular directory, I called expensed expense reports. I have different Excel documents that are getting tiered. 
Now I can also go to my completed queue and see if any of this data has already been tiered. And we notice there's already some that have been tiered out. So if I were to go back out to my user's view of the share, you'll notice all of my data is now tiered to secondary tier. We don't necessarily, as I said, have to leave a stub on the primary tier. We could just copy this data to secondary tier almost as a backup if you wanted to do that. Now for administrators or even end users to rehydrate any of this data, for example, this test file, if I were to double click on this file, we would see all of the test information in here. If I were an end user and I deleted this file on accident, what I could do is go right back into the recovery portal and straight through the recovery portal, we have the NTP software VFM recovery portal, which is designed for end users to recover their own data. So that file was stubbed out to secondary tier. They had opened it, which means it was rehydrated back to primary tier. And now what we want to do is give that user the ability to, once they've deleted it, to find the data again. So here this user could go in and select the server if they wanted to. They could select the share they were tiering from or that they lost the file from, in this case, their home drive. They can even select the folders if they wanted to and browse through and see the folders in their home drive. But in this case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to search for a particular file. And this was a text file, so we're going to do a find here. And when we click find, it's going to go through and find all the data that's ever been tiered out to the secondary tier of storage. And we see all sorts of different documents out here. We can see the different versions of the documents. We can keep as many versions of the documents. And I could go through all of them here, and I could find that file that is right here. It's a text file. Let's say I want to rehydrate that back to a primary tier. I can check that off and I can scroll down and I can either rehydrate the stub to primary tier, giving you the ability to click on it again and rehydrate it or just rehydrate the contents of the file of the primary tier or just get a copy of the file straight from the website if I don't really need the file back on primary. Now, I'm going to tell this to restore the file back to primary tier when I click here. And we'll see the user has this pending, and it's letting them know that the system is now processing the request and is going to rehydrate that back to primary tier. Now, the user could sit here and wait for this pending to go to executing and then go to completed, or that end user could also just go back out to their home directory, and they would see the file has come right back. And we would see that this request has now completed successfully with no issues, and the user can come right back out to their home drive and double-click on that file, and you'll see the information is back. So with that, you see the primary features of the NTP software VFM product. You have the ability to tear out secondary tier storage. Based on policies, we can do that with a core tiering engine, or we can do that manually with right-clicking and tiering. We have the ability to write multiple locations at the same time, so I could write to local storage and cloud or two different data centers if you wanted us to for high availability and redundancy of archived data. And you have the ability to give end users restore capabilities. This is where they can restore their own information back to primary tier as need be. Thanks for watching this presentation. You can see more videos on our YouTube channel.